Hello guys, how are you doing? I usually record few videos in row during my weekends and this for this weekend, this is the last video. Little bit tired, but I want to complete this as well. So one of our last video, we discussed about creating a production grade serverless application. But uh, I promise you it will evolve a step by step to make it real, real production ready. Because uh, we created passwords on the environment variables and other people can see the password and it's not good on like when you're redeploying and everything, you have to go to code base and change all those things. So it's a really, really production ready game. But today I'm going to take one more step. I'm going to move all these parameters to parameter store. Parameter store mean in AWS, you can use something called SSM. In AWS SSM service or a system manager service, there's a sub module called parameter store. Those parameters too, you can store parameters. So if you uh, go to AWS and if you go to SSM, if you search for SSM and you can go here in here, you can go to parameters store and then here you can create parameters to your projects, right? For now, we don't have any, any parameters created, so uh, it's empty. So when you create parameters, you can create the, all the data types you want, like uh, all the string boolean numbers. I mean, there are workarounds, but it's straight, it's straightforward way it doesn't support. And this video is not intended to explain you the SSM or parameter store is feature. So there are some best practices involved when you create parameter stores. For example, when you create your parameters, it's good if you can create parameters in a hierarchical way. For example, let's say um, your project is a uh, project code labs, the code lab slash employee service slash databases slash um, Postgres slash username. So in that case, you can create an, another parameter if you have a different database. Uh, code lab slash employee service slash databases slash mongodb slash username something like that so why it is important uh, this client the ssm client you can use on your code it's support to fetch the parameters based on a path so in that case you can fetch all the parameters belong to employee service or if you can fetch you can fetch all the parameters belong to employee service databases or you can go to the next level and fetch all the parameters belong to employee service databases postgres right so likewise you can create a parameters as a tree so you can go to one branch and you can fetch all the uh, children for belong to that branch so that therefore it's better to use that uh, good practice when you use in the parameter store there are a few other things like if you use this really store in the encrypted value um, but encryption, encrypted value is not a topic for this video and it will go for the next video because it involves its own some additional configuration like KMS, which is a key management service and other service we need to discuss. So therefore, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but um, we can use the secure parameters like a password as well, right? So uh, I'm not going to use this UI to create these parameters because it's bad if you want to come to UI all the time. So instead of that, I'm going to use my code in, uh, to create these parameters. So uh, this is the same project we did last time, but someone found a, a defect on my code and uh, he says like uh, your code doesn't matter which ID you pass and it always fetch the um, same employee. Yeah, it was a bug and he sent the full request and I merge it, right? If you already use in my code and um, you can get uh, update. Uh, and also I really, really happy and I really encourage you to find, uh, if you find something wrong with my codes and just send me a pull request and I'm really happy to merge. Okay, so then other people also can use it. Right, cool. So if you go to our serverless file, so you can see here, we have some hard-coded uh, properties, right? So in, in this video, I'm going to move this to parameter store and make sure if you follow along, you also do the same. In that case, you can follow the next step because next step, uh, I, I won't have these um, properties on the uh, this serverless file, right? Okay. So in order to do that, we need to do this in a, first we need to create these parameters. You can use, if you want the resources to create these parameters, you can use a resources uh, file. And then like, remember last time we did, we created some SNS resources like that you can do it. But in order to do that also, you need to deploy the project at least the first time, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these parameters uh, on a, a simple text file and I'm going to run those parameters, create those parameters using uh, AWS CLI, right? But keep in mind, if you want, really, really want, you can go here and you can create a uh, parameter file 
and you can create these parameters as this project. So when you deploy the project, it will automatically create those parameters, right? That's always an option, but here I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm going to uh, create something like a parameters.ts. This is not necessarily to create inside the project. You can keep it inside anywhere you want, right? And I'm going to write this command. So then let's say not the TS, let this make a shell script, SH, right? And I'm going to just copy and paste this into the terminal. I'm using this file so I can explain this to you, okay? So first I'm going to use AWS because that's AWS CLI command. And my service is SSM, right? And then my command is put parameter, okay? My parameter name is, I'm going to use, um, employee service it's if you have a project name right let's say uh, i'm going to use as a cosmos right is a project name and the service name and then environment that's good practice to use and then these are the database right and this is a postgres database and this is a host name okay database host name okay so and value is value for my host name uh, is I'm going to copy the my database URL and paste it here, right? And then uh, my type of this parameter is a string, okay? Type of parameter is a string. Then I need to tell what is the region I'm going to uh, create this parameter. And I'm going to create this in the US West 2 region. Make sure your serverless functions deploy on the same region. And then data type is text right and i'm going to use the profile to create these parameters because remember in the last video i explained in order to deploy these uh, services you need to use a profile so the profile is here my profile is aws personal right that's all i think um but not sure so let's try to get this and execute on the uh, um, terminal so we can see if i'm missing something so let's get this little up and paste it here yeah, it worked, right? So it created, and then if I go back here, if I go to this parameter store again, it's the same parameter store, you can see I have the parameter. If I go here, you can see uh, it's a string and you can see the value. Since this is not a secure string, uh, you can see the value from here, right? So I don't want to waste your time. I'm just going to copy these uh, for a few times and then change the value accordingly. And then I'll, um, show you i must stop the video until i modify that right i have all those uh, values created here you can see i have a few parameters right so now i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy these all these values all these uh, commands and i'm going to paste it here this parameter is already exit so i want to skip that one so i need these five parameters and i'm going to paste this and it will create on my count right so those created, if I come back here and if I refresh this, I, you will see all those uh, six parameters are now created, right? So now let's see how we can use this on our project. So for that, what we need to do is, uh, we can go back here, right? We need to replace these values with the, yeah, your SSM value, right? So how you can do that, I'm going to delete this one, okay? What I'm going to do, I'm going to use this and dollar, I'm going to use the curly braces and why because I need to uh, evaluate this SSM and then uh, I'm going to copy that path I have created right for uh, let's go to parameters to and this is this is my path name and come back here and this is my path okay but here, this dev, when I'm changing, when I'm deploying the QA and the UAT and somewhere else, I don't want to like every, every time come here and change this. So therefore, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use um, other evaluator here called SLS colon stage, right? So now it will overwrite whenever QA, it will, be, it will become QA here and it will be, when it UAT, it will become UAT here, right? So this is, uh, this is my path and I'm going to ask to, hey, get the host name, okay? So likewise, I want to replace this to uh, all other values. So I think I replace everything, right? Host name, port and DB name, username, password, and everything, right? So sounds good. 
So now, technically, we just created the parameters and also we refer those parameters from our project, right? So I think I didn't miss anything, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to use this in the offline. And meantime, let's get this insomnia. Okay, um, it's running. Let's try to fetch some records. Okay, it worked. So don't worry about this. This is not uh, like error or something like that. Because since because I use a trace log, it printing where it happened. So it is just a log, right? New database connection made. And it came, so let's create a new employee and see. Uh, example, employee, right? So I'm going to create this employee. Okay, so now if I fetch all the employees, it should work. Yeah, it can't, right? So now parameters are fetching from parameters to. So in that case, uh, whenever you deploy this uh, on a different uh, environment or different server or anywhere, you don't have to go back to the uh, code base and change anything because all the parameters are centralizedly managed through the parameters to. And I understand still password is in the clear text and like at least we move like from the ground to the one step because now uh, even though you have access to code base, you won't see the passwords. So that's a good, right? So now because usually tech lead or an architect will configure this one and it sent to the uh, parameter store and then the uh, usual developers when don't have access to the parameter store, in that case, they won't see the password. So at least we move from one step to another step. But on the downside here still, if you go back to here and if you go to, uh, okay, we didn't deploy the Lambda. Right, so if you deploy this uh, stack, when you go to the lambda and in the environment variable section, you will see that, right? So let me to show you that. Why? Yes, I'm just saying it, right? So let's deploy this. It gives us a warning. I, I was thinking to explain this uh, in the last video, but I forgot it because when we set the timeout here in the uh, lambda, but the API, when, when you attach the Lambda to the API gateway, the default timeout is 30 seconds. So therefore, though you uh, add a 60 second here, it won't affect it because the API gateway restricting to the 30 seconds. So that is the meaning of this warning. So let's anyway, reset and deploy again. So now you can see it's all deployed, right? If you want, we can use these uh, endpoints to call this, but that is not what we're trying to see. So let's go back here and get the Lambda. Okay. So you will see our Lambda functions, but let me to show you something. So you can see, we can go for any, any uh, Lambda function we want. And if you go to this configuration section, and if you go to this, environment variables you can see all those values are here in plain text right so now the problem is so yes we remove the uh, passwords and sensitive information from your service configuration files so now any ordinary developer won't see these things right so now that means we are from the ground zero we came to one level up we apply some level of security now but the problem here most of developers may have access to these lambda functions Right, so the Lambda console. If they have access to Lambda console, they can come here and see these uh, whatever this sensitive information. We may we can block them from the parameter store, but sometime, most of the time, we give them access to the Lambda console so they can see. So therefore, this is not the ultimate real solution. In the next video, we are going to see how we can create this uh, encrypted value for these parameters. So in that case, we can bypass them from the environment variable and directly link with our serverless code. In that case, it's more secure than it is not uh, plain available in anywhere uh, in your code or in your configuration. So that's that's a way you to go. But it involves certain more configuration with the KMS and everything. So it takes some time to discuss. It will be the 30 minutes, okay? So then um, I hope you understand and I hope you will uh, do this along and then I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, take care.